Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a homemade radical equation. We have the square root of x times the square root of x times the square root of x equals x to the power square root of x and we're looking for x values. So let's go ahead and simplify the left hand side. We can actually do it in a couple different ways. Uh, let me introduce um, both of them. So first of all I can think about this x as under one radical, so that's going to be x to the power one half. And then this x is actually under two radicals because it's the square root of the square root of x. So we can write that as x to the power one fourth. In other words, we can basically write uh, x to the power one half to the power one half, which makes x to the power one fourth. And this x is under three radicals, so we can write it as x to the power one half to the power one half to the power one half, which can be written as x to the power 1 over 8. And on the right hand side I can just leave it as is x to the power square root of x. Now we have the same base on both sides so that's good. We can go ahead and add the exponents on the left hand side so this gives us x to the power 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth and the right hand side again stays the same x to the power square root of x. Great. Now we can go ahead and make a common denominator for the fractions, which is 8. So this is going to become x to the power 4 eighths plus 2 eighths plus 1 eighth. And that is going to equal x to the power square root of x. If we add the numerators, we get x to the power 7 over 8 equals x to the power square root of x. Great. So we end up with a simpler equation. The bases are the same, so the exponents must also be the same. But that's not the only choice, but let's start with that one. So in this case, I can safely say that square root of x equals 7 over 8. If we square both sides, we get x equals 49 over 64, which is a number less than 1, but it's positive. At the end, we're going to take a look at a graph, which will also kind of verify what we found. Okay, what is the other option? Well, if you think about it, the bases are variables. So in addition to being uh, the exponents being equal, we also have that the bases can be one or negative one. Because if you think about it, when you have something like a to the power uh, b equals a to the power c, this actually also, this implies a couple of different things like b equals c or a equals uh, 1 or a equals negative 1. But if a is negative 1, then we also need b and c to be even. Okay. So we're going to look at all these cases, right? We also need to consider the domain, which is uh, positive real numbers. Because, because of the square root of x, x needs to be greater than 0. Okay, and so far we're good in that sense. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other options. The base can be 1, so x equals 1. And that's going to work because any power of 1 is 1, so this is, this is always going to work. The third case scenario is x equals negative 1. Unfortunately, that's not going to work because of the restriction on x being positive. So we have this requirement, which actually this allows or prohibits x equals negative 1. So we end up with two solutions here, and those are going to be the only solutions. So let me go ahead and introduce an alternative way to simplify this. And then after that, we're going to look at the graph. So we have the square root of x times the square root of x times the square root of x or the square root of x, yeah, exactly, that's what it is. So I can also do the following. When you have something like x times square root of x, you can write this x as square root of x squared, or as long as x is positive. Square root of x can be, um, or x can be written as square root of x squared. So here you can basically write this as square root of x squared times square root of x. But then you have to square root it, multiply by x, and square root it again. Now, since we have two radicals, they can be multiplied, and that gives us square root of x cubed. But they're under two radicals. And then we have the other x. Now, since we have two radicals here, the square root of, the square root of x cubed, that means the fourth root of x cubed. And that is multiplied by x. And now we have another x outside, but that's a fourth root, so we can write the x as the fourth root of x to the fourth because it's the same as x as long as x is positive and the other one is just going to stay the same and we still have the square root on the outside. Now we have the two fourth roots inside, right? 
So we can kind of go ahead and multiply them, the fourth root of x to the fourth times x to the third is going to give me x to the seventh, but they're also under a square root. Now we have the square root of the fourth root, which indicates that is uh, the eighth root, because something to the power one half or one fourth to the power one half, that's going to be one eighth. So this is the same as the eighth root of x to the seven, which eventually turns into x to the power seven over eight. Obviously, this is a very complicated way to do it, but it's just another alternative to simplify what's on the left-hand side. Just compare it to the first approach, where we just simply write each radical as an exponential. All right, makes sense? So uh, we can proceed the same way, and we'll end up with the same solution. Okay, great. So this is going to equal x to the power of square root of x, square root of x is equals this, and so on and so forth. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and the graph is going to verify what we found. So we graph two functions here, the square root of x times the square root of x times the square root of x, and x to the power of square root of x. So they're both curves, even though the, uh, the, the blue one kind of looks uh, like a straight line, but it's not a straight line. They're both curves, obviously. Uh, but x to the power square root of x is kind of similar to x to the power x, except uh, it curves differently, obviously. Its growth is different, its minimum point is different, so on and so forth. But what is really interesting is that these two curves intersect at two points, at x equals 1 and x equals 49 over 64. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then... Be safe, take care, and bye-bye.